така. Колеги, това е втория доклад за днес от нашата отчетна сесия, която тази година протича разпределена във времето. Поради големия брой колеги в секцията решихме да създадем тая възможност някои от докладите да бъдат изнесени в отделни семинарни сбирки преди официалната дата на сесията, която е в петък 16. Следващия петък 16. Петър реши да използва тази възможност, както и много други наши колеги. Петър е заповядай. Благодаря. Доколкото имаме колеги от чужбина и аз като Веско ще продължа на английски. Това може да направиш. Добре, това Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I'm going to discuss some some joint work with uh, Ugo Brutso from CISA, which uh, I've, uh, I've mentioned previously about pieces of it, but uh, now it's, we're getting closer to conclusion, to concluding one piece of it. Uh, so I've added sort of the missing pieces of the title. So, so the, uh, I'll be talking about Zyberg root and differentials on the Hitchin base and uh, Jerry Gaussman in uh, derivatives. Uh, so there are many, uh, there are many pieces uh, that we need to set up the story. Uh, so essentially my talk would consist of several chunks of preliminaries and then a, a, a statement. Uh, now I'll try to, uh, to give you a little bit of, uh, of context so that uh, since we, we have a mixed uh, audience. Uh, so essentially uh, in, uh, in 87, uh, Hitchin uh, described uh, discovered actually a very interesting algebraic completely integrable system. Uh, uh, and so the base of that parameterizes a family of, uh, of curves. So in this talk curve would mean uh, proper algebraic curve over C. Actually for some part of the discussion, you might think of it analytically as a compact Riemann surface connected. Um, so, They'll be interchanging the two viewpoints. So, uh, so the base of uh, this family of integral curves carries on one hand uh, um, some sort of Hodge theoretic or differential geometric structures. Uh, now, there is a big uh, Zariski dense open set right in the base, which uh, parameterizes uh, generic covers of our base curve. Uh, and uh, on this, you have a certain variation of uh, weight one variation of first structures. It has a Zyberg written differential. So uh, I'll, I'll describe what these uh, words mean uh, in a bit. Um, so that would be part of the multiple ingredients. Uh, so essentially, the, the goal would be to, uh, to describe the, the, Zyberg, the derivative of the Zyberg written differential in some in this case, it's actually a whole class of cases because there are many different Hitchin systems to describe it in terms of sort of explicitly in terms of some global data uh, for the covering in some lead theoretical data. Uh, so let me, uh, the, the different, the different uh, directions from which we uh, can approach the subject. So we can, uh, we can approach it either from the viewpoint of uh, Camel curves from so the Higgs bundles modular viewpoint, um, from Hodge theoretic viewpoint. So I, I'll start with with the sort of Hodge theoretic view, uh, and uh, then uh, focus on the part of it that I need. So uh, just a, again a brief uh, reminder on what's the variation of Hodge structures. This is uh, this uh, object uh, introduced by uh, uh, Philip Griffiths, uh, I guess in the uh, well, in a sequence of uh, papers in the in the seventies, I guess. Uh, so, uh, so there are different versions. Let's say a real VHS of weight W. So W is an integer. This is the following data. On one hand, we start. So B is a complex manifold, which would be the base. Uh, so if you want, uh, you know, it doesn't. You can think of uh, a non-proper base. So the base could be. Uh, could be an affine variety, it could be actually a disk, uh, right? It doesn't have to be compact. So um, the first ingredient is a vector bundle, homomorphic vector bundle on a base, uh, equipped with uh, a connection. 
our connection here means a homomorphic connection. So, uh, which is called in this context the uh, the Gauss-Mannin connection. Then uh, we require that this vector bundle has a real subbundle, uh, which is which is uh, horizontal or flat uh, for uh, for the connection. So this is a real structure. Uh, and uh, the vector bundle V that we start with is, is obtained by tensoring uh, VR with, uh, with OB, right? OB is the sheaf of homomorphic functions on the base. Uh, next, we will require that the vector bundle V is actually filtered. It comes with a filtration, a decreasing filtration, um, which is called the Hodge filtration. It comes with a pairing. So, uh, a non-degenerate pairing, which, which is uh, with values in the in the smooth functions, uh, depending on the weight, you require this to be either symmetric or skew symmetric, uh, and uh, the, the pro, this is called the polarization, and the polarization takes real values on on the real subbundle. And these these data require uh, are required to satisfy. Uh, a couple of compatibility conditions. Right? On one is the uh, one is the Griffith transversality condition, which says that uh, once you apply an upward to the pth piece of the filtration, it it doesn't stay horizontal. It moves, but it moves not too far. It moves by the, by one. So uh, the pth piece of the filtration uh, is transported by an upward to the p minus first piece. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's the first. Uh, Part of the data, and then the second part is that uh, the vector bundle V splits into a sum of the pth piece and a complementary piece, which is W plus one minus P, a complex conjugate. Right? So, the for the complex conjugation, we need the, the real structure so that it makes sense. Um, there are different ways of repackaging this data. So, sometimes instead of working with the with the pieces of the filtration FP, you look at the, look at the Hodge bundles, right? So you look at uh, this intersection here, of the pth and W minus pth bar uh, piece, and uh, you break V into, into a sum. Now, uh, these actually, however, do not vary homomorphically. So it's, it's better to work with the, um, with the FPs. Uh, and they are the different pieces. The piece P, the piece P, and the complementary piece are orthogonal, and there's a certain positivity condition. Uh, now, since we're limited, uh, I don't, I wouldn't like to, to discuss too much sort of the historical origins. Uh, maybe just a, a brief comment. If you so historically or geometrically, these arise from families of uh, projective uh, varieties or compact smooth projective varieties or compact Keller manifolds. Um, so they don't have to be algebraic, uh, actually. So uh, in that case, if you have such a family, you can look at the cohomology um, of, the, of the fiber, and uh, you can look at the Hodge filtration of the cohomology and uh, uh, the bundles uh, FP are these direct sums of, of uh, of the different HPQs, the different HI W minus I with uh, I greater than or equal to P. So we, uh, we have the, uh, the Hodge uh, decomposition and the Hodge filtration on, uh, on the cohomology. So, uh, so that's sort of the, uh, this was the abstract, uh, the abstract structure and uh, we, uh, you know, it comes, uh, from a geometrical setup. Now, uh, by the way, there is a interesting object uh, associated to, to this data. So since uh, since we have Griffith transversality and the Gauss-Mannin connection moves the, the pth piece by at most one, if you take the associated graded, uh, you get an O-linear map from induced by the connection. And if you stack these together, you get the sum, you get a endomorphism of this graded bundle. Uh, Twisted by the one differentials, so uh, this was one of the sort of motivating examples for Carol Simpson to introduce uh, Higgs bundles on higher dimensional varieties. So, so if you know what the Higgs bundle is, you you see that we can obtain a Higgs bundle on the base of uh, of a VHS in a very special way. 
uh, for, for the current talk, this would be uh, a bit uh, in the background. So it would not be uh, that important, but it's, uh, not, but NABO itself would be important. So uh, the special two special conditions uh, that uh, I, I want to mention. So if we if we have a violation of weight three, uh, we say that uh, it has uh, it satisfies the Kawabiao condition if uh, if the third piece is actually a flank one, and then uh, the associated gra associated gradient of the second mod the third uh, has the uh, has flank which is the dimension of the base, uh, and. Uh, uh, and if uh, whenever you pick a non-zero section in the third piece uh, and you apply NABWA, you get uh, an isomorphism from the tangent bundle of the base to, to this quotient F2 mod F3. Right? So it's a, it's a very special situation which arises uh, on, uh, for example, geometrically arises when you have a family of, uh, of uh, gauge Terabi L3 folds. Uh, so, that's a, again, that's a special case where we just have a three pieces uh, and uh, the Hodge number is R1, the dimension of the base, the dimension of the base one. Now, um, this setup arises uh, actually uh, can be linked to, to another structure that uh, appears in uh, weight one, uh, which is uh, the presence of a, of a zyber equivalent differential. So uh, suppose we have a relation of hot structures, let's say integral. So instead of having a real sub bundle, you, you have a lattice of uh, you know, three, uh, Z, a sheaf of Z modules uh, that you transfer with O to get the V uh, of, uh, of weight one. So we say that we have a zyber equivalent differential, an abstract zyber equivalent differential, uh, if there is a section in the degree one piece with the property that the homomorphism from TB to V0. So there is a, an O linear map, uh, which uh, defined, let's say, on stocks or on local sections is defined by taking, um, let's say, a local vector field on the base or a germ of vector fields and differentiating the zyber equivalent section in, in the direction of V. So if that map factors to an isomorphism between TB and, uh, and V1, so you can get everything in V1 by differentiating the zyber equivalent section. Right? So this is a, uh, another sort of very special type of uh, variations of Hodge structures uh, that uh, uh, we'll be interested in. Uh, so just a quick uh, idea of uh, the why uh, these structures uh, Interesting. So, uh, first of all, uh, if we if we have the weight one variation with the zyber equivalent differential, we can refine it to a weight three variation by uh, by taking the third piece to be uh, the line bundle spanned by lambda done by the zyber equivalent differential, and then taking uh, f one to be the orthogonal of the third piece with respect to the um, uh, with respect to the um, to the polarization, right? So we we fill in this uh, v one v zero by uh, a smaller sub a rank one sub bundle and uh, uh, and uh, an f one which is uh, co dimension one. Uh, so there is a link. Uh, with the Kawabiao condition, if you if you pass to the total space of uh, F three minus uh, the zero section, you actually get the uh, Kawabiao, uh, and pull back all the data there, you you would get a VHS uh, satisfying the Kawabiao condition. So uh, there is uh, again in physics uh, this was uh, the, this came in as uh, or in differential geometry. It is. Uh, got related to so-called special killer geometry um, that uh, in this package, in, in the way I'm using it was uh, sort of popularized, let's say by Dan Fried uh, in, his, uh, in his paper. Um, physicists sometimes call the special killer metric 
uh, semi-flat metric. So you might have heard this under different names. Uh, and let me also mention that once we have this uh, weight one variation, we can actually associate with a family of complex story, uh, which is uh, take V and mod it out by V1 plus the lattice. Uh, so the vertical bundle of this vibration of Tore is, uh, well, it is V mod to V1. Uh, so naturally it's a more effect to, to V1 duo. Uh, but if you use the polarization, you can identify V1 duo with V1 on one hand. And if you use the zyberg section, you can identify the, the vertical bundle with, with T duo B. So, this is a situation that is, should remind you sort of a symplectic geometry. And uh, if we actually did have a symplectic form on the, on the family of Tori, we would get another such isomorphism. And uh, it's a result of uh, the Nagy Markman uh, and also in the general, more general framework by uh, Florian Beck that, you know, if you have the zyberg quitten section, there is unique symplectic form uh, that induces this isomorphism between the vertical bundle and uh, TGOB. TGOB is the cotangent bundle to, to the base. So uh, there are a couple of, uh, again, these are some aspects that uh, of uh, some particular types of uh, variations of host structures uh, that, um, that we would be uh, using. So uh, now this is, again, this is a very general framework. Uh, we were going to focus on a special type of uh, weight one variation that comes from actually a family of curves. So to construct this, uh, this family of curves, or this is, these are generalization of, of Hitchens uh, spectral curves. Uh, right? So these are the, the camera curves. Uh, uh, that uh, that we know, let's say, from the work of uh, or of work of many people. So, uh, for example, from the work of uh, Donaghi. Um, so, uh, we uh, so we're going to fix. Uh, also, another screen, Emilio. Uh, there are many many people have uh, worked. Uh, Worked on this, Vasil Kanev, of course. Uh, so um, we uh, uh, we're going to fix some uh, additional data uh, to construct the family um, of uh, of uh, camera curves in the following way. So the main data would be uh, a simple complex Lie group G uh, together with the choice of uh, Borel and Cartan. Uh, so T and B would be uh, the Borel and the, uh, would be the Cartan and the Borel respectively, and I'm going to choose uh, to write uh, factor T, factor B, and factor G for the respectively algebras, and W for the value group. And we pick a Riemann surface uh, of genus at least two, right? Uh, so compact and connected. If you're working in the uh, analytic uh, setup, so. Um, that's sort of the uh, the main data that we uh, essentially need. Now there is a, uh, a two bits of additional data that make uh, that uh, allow us to sort of make some calculations more explicit. Uh, so in a way, this is sort of a technical convenience. This choice of additional data. So the additional data is on one hand a choice of generators for the W invariants, right? So the Weil group acts on um, the, uh, the Cartan subalgebra T. Uh, so it acts on um, it acts on the polynomials on the Cartan algebra. So it acts on the symmetric uh, algebra on T duo. And uh, so we have the link of invariants, right? And uh, this is again a polynomial link by, by work of, uh, let's say, constant, uh, for example. Um, uh, Chevalier also, I believe. So, um, uh, so pick generators for these. Uh, the, this is not, there are many, the, the choice of generators is not unique. There's no canonical choice of generators, but uh, again, by result of uh, constant, the, the, the degree of the, 
of the homogeneous generators is always uh, the same. So, uh, so fix one such choice and fix uh, fix positive fields. Uh, fix a choice of positive fields. Uh, Again, for since uh, my goal would be to look for some explicit uh, descriptions, so uh, the choice of uh, positive fields would be, um, I mean, of simple fields, simple positive fields would be essential. So uh, once you do that, actually, you can uh, sort of have a more explicit description of, uh, of the joint quotient. Right? We have the joint quotient map, which takes T to T mod W. Uh, so once we uh, have the simple roots, we can uh, identify on one hand, so the simple roots would give me coordinates on the Cartan. So I can identify T with uh, C to the L, L is the rank. On the other hand, the choice of generators would allow me to identify the quotient with CL. So at the end of the day, I can think of, with this data, I can think of the, of the adjoint quotient uh, as, uh, as a map just from CL to CL. Right. Um, so um, let's say if you uh, if you want to to be concrete, right? You can you can write this explicitly. So I've given here um, the two two rank two cases, right? If uh, if we take SL three, um, the I've chosen now here is the and I've chosen the simple roots alpha one and uh, alpha two. Um, this is uh, this is what the polynomials i1 and i2 look for look like, um, and you have a similar picture for uh, for g1 uh, for g2. <laughs> so uh, for g2, uh, for the exceptional group g2, actually uh, I'm slightly uh, lying here. I mean here in this choice, alpha one and alpha two uh, are in fact not a simple. I mean uh, they're not simple, but what let's say alpha two is alpha one plus the simple, but uh, we need to um, to change the coordinates a bit, but still this is one choice of uh, uh, invariant polynomials and one description of the adjoint quotient map uh, as a finite map from C2 to C2. Uh, so again, so we can be, uh, very concrete if we if we want to describe the uh, adjoint quotient with this data. All right. So with this data, uh, the, the choice of the Riemann surface and this the algebraic data, uh, we can uh, uh, we can describe the uh, now a family of uh, actually covers of the curve X uh, as follows. So I'll do it in two steps. So first we can cook up a vector bundle of rank L of, uh, on, on uh, X, which is just the tensor product of KX with, uh, with the Cartan over C. So the, um, essentially this is just L copies of the canonical bundle. If you want sections of this bundle are Diagonal matrices, local sections are diagonal matrices with uh, entries, uh, homomorphic one forms on the curve. So M would be the total space. So this is a vector bundle of Ankel. Uh, now, if we if we use so the Weyl group acts on this vector bundle, we are acting on the fibers. So it acts fiber-wise. Uh, so we can look at the quotient. The quotient splits. Uh, well, the quotient is. If we don't have extra data, it's just a, a bundle of uh, a cone bundle, a bundle of cones. If you if you use the choice of invariant polynomials, it splits into a sum of line bundles, which are powers of uh, of, uh, of the canonical, and the powers are the degrees of the invariant polynomial. So this is a sum of uh, k x to the d k. Capital k x is the canonical bundle, and uh, we have L copies of uh, various powers. So, uh, I thought the picture is this. On one hand, we have the total space of the bundle M. So, M is the total space of T tensor K. That's a rank L bundle. Uh, on the other hand, we have this quotient uh, map of M uh, by the Weyl group, right? So that's, another, that's, another, uh, that's another bundle of rank L uh, over X. And so the horizontal map is the adjoint quotient along the fibers. It's not a bundle map. It's a map of varieties over X. It's, it's not a linear map on the fibers. Uh, so 
It's very much nonlinear, as we saw in the previous example. So, uh, so the Hitchin base uh, is going to be just the set of uh, the vector space of uh, sections of the bundle U, right? H zero of U. Uh, if you want, by Riemann Roch, you can compute the dimension. So this is c to the uh, power of the dimension of g times g minus one. The dimension of the group times uh, the genus of the curve uh, minus one. So we get now from each section in the base, uh, we get the cover, right? Because we can look at the evaluation map of the section. The evaluation maps sends x to the total space of u, and you can pull back uh, this w cover uh, to your curve x. So this is the camera cover that corresponds to uh, to the point B, right? So uh, so we're getting over the base B a family of of covers which are ramified w gamma covers. In general, they're ramified. Uh, uh, and the biology of X. So these are curves with, with tons of uh, automorphisms. Right? So uh, the actual, let's say for, for the group G2, I know that they maximize the, the bound on the automorphisms. Uh, so of course, some of them would be singular, right? some of them would be non-reduced. They could be as bad as they want. Uh, so I'm going to write B for the I'm going to write script B inside calligraphic B uh, to be uh, there's a there's a risky open of, of generic covers so covers with smooth with with um, uh, with um, with generic ramification so uh, those whose uh, generic ramification index is uh, two right so it's uh, over each point you have. Uh, uh, so the ramifications are uh, the the ramification the uh, the ramification of locus breaks into sheets where just just uh, points where just two sheets meet. And you have generic ramification. So on this locus, uh, we have a weight one variation of Hodge structures. Um, maybe first sort of uh, the naive description is uh, is the following the. The V zero, right? We need the bundle with a with a sub bundle. If we just have weight one variation, uh, the bundle is the set of uh, W invariant sections of uh, H one with uh, coefficients in the Cartan. So, for instance, for the group SO two, we would have just H one of C right? with constant coefficients, and you have the uh, bio invariants in that. Um, now, inside of that. The degree uh, one uh, piece is uh, uh, H0 of T tensor K, W invariance of uh, H0 of T tensor K, but now this is K for the, uh, uh, for the camera cover. So these are the W invariant sections, W invariant global sections of uh, T tensor K X theta. So, uh, so if you want, you can describe it sort of invariantly. I here I've given it point by point. Uh, so the global description will be the following. You, you need a lattice. So instead, of, so this is a Z variation. Instead of a real sub bundle, you get a, um, a sheaf of lattices, uh, which is obtained just by taking the, taking the root lattice uh, in, uh, in T. And so we have the push forward. Uh, Functor, and you have also the push the the W invariant push forward functor. So over each open in the base, you look at sections of the pre-image that are W invariant, and you take the derived functors of this. So this is a again this is a bit technical and the standard, but the standard construction on the other hand. Um, so the bundle V is this VZ tensor with the homomorphic. For more fixed sections on B, uh, and uh, this V1 is uh, just R0 of uh, T tensor omega 1 of the, of the relative differentials of the curve uh, of the family of curves over, over it should be the script B, not the calligraphic B. Um, so this, uh, this family has a Zabrak Witten differential. Uh, now, the zeibler quitting differential is essentially the restriction of the Liouville form. Now, the subtlety is that there is a, uh, if the group is, 
anything but SO2. Uh, we don't have a single little VO4 and we have L of them. Or in other words, we have a, a vector value to a T value of little VO4. I'll, that would be uh, one of my further uh, ingredients that I'll describe. So uh, for the moment, uh, let me just say that we have a zeidler quinton differential. And so respectively, we have this map uh, that take, takes a tangent vector and uh, sends it to uh, the derivative, uh, the gauss minor derivative of, uh, of lambda in the direction of that tangent vector. And this map should be an isomorphism. Now, if you spell things out, uh, what should you get at V1B is H0 of T tensor K W invariance. Uh, the tangent space to the base is uh, actually the base itself. So the tangent space to the base is uh, this space of global sections H, uh, on top, right? Uh, H0 of X uh, and I tend the direct sum of KXD. So uh, this map here should, uh, should take a collection of uh, global sections of powers of the canonical on the base and should produce for me uh, a section of T tensor K on the camel cover and a double invariant section of T tensor K on the camel cover. So somehow it should get rid of the powers. Don't notice that the, the powers of D disappear, but, uh, but we get double invariant sections. Uh, so, our goal essentially is to, to have a description of this map uh, in terms of Lie theory and in terms of the covering, sort of a global description of this map in terms of Lie theory and in terms of the covering data. Right? So one should be able to do this. Right? Um, uh, and uh, there are various reasons. Maybe I'll, I'll say uh, a couple of words about applications at the end, but uh, if uh, I manage to get to it, but uh, essentially having this data, for example, having explicit form of this data uh, allows you to understand better the, um, let's say the special Kevin metric on the, on the Hitchin base and, and various other differential geometric or Hodge, Hodge theoretic uh, structures that live on the base. So, uh, so sort of that's a, now um, uh, a more, um, more a sharper version of the of the plan. Right? So we're looking for uh, for a way of explicating the map that takes a tangent vector to the base and sends it to the derivative of the zeidler quinton differential. Right? Uh, and this map is going to depend on the point on the base. It's going to depend on which camel curve we we're picking. Oops. So uh, just yeah, just as a, a comment, if uh, if someone is more uh, in favor of sort of integrable systems viewpoint on this, you could you could you could have that view too. So we have we have the family of camel curves, so some covers of our curve X. There is a relative uh, prime vibration associated to it, uh, and uh, now so the the fiber is some abelian variety. Uh, now the tangent space to that. Uh, to an arbitrary point, so the abelian variety, you know, to understand the tangent phase at an arbitrary point, it's enough to understand it at the origin. Uh, and by cell duality, the tangent space to uh, uh, to the prim is is the dual to to the space that appeared on the previous slide to H zero to tensor k W invariance. So uh, you can think of this isomorphism uh, five actually as a way of taking a tangent vector to the base, lifting it. Uh, to a vector field along the respective prim fiber, and then pairing that with the symplectic form on the prim. So the, the family of prims is an integrable system, and you can pair that on the symplectic form. So this is, uh, we were trying to get a handle of this um, in terms of the data and uh, of the of the data of the cover. So uh, for SL2, just as an idea, Things are very explicit and very simple, and uh, 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 easy to describe. Although one still needs to do a calculation. Uh, so, in uh, for SL two, we're talking about an isomorphism between k squared on the base, 
uh, so the quadratic differentials on the base curve versus z mod two anti invariant differentials on the cover, right? X tilde b is a, it's a w cover. Uh, and uh, it's a z mod w, in this case, is z mod two. Uh, so uh, the action is the, so the invariants are actually the anti invariants. So the, uh, the section that are anti invariant on, on x tilde b. So in this case, the map is. Uh, essentially, you take a section, you take a tangent vector, which is a section in uh, again in k squared, and uh, you pull it back and you um, you divide it by the tautological section. Uh, so there is a certain tautological section on uh, on the total space of M of uh, PR plus k squared, and lambda is the usual, well, classical but homomorphic. The real form, which is uh, the, the Zabelquitan form here. So, uh, so we're trying to understand this for uh, for for arbitrary rank, in a way. Uh, so, uh, let's see um, briefly. So, so the, the second piece of ingredients. So we saw now the uh, the sort of Hodge, Hodge theoretic ingredients, so the family of the VHS, and we got a. Uh, we saw how we get the family of we get the VHS from from uh, from this data, which is Lee theoretic, and the curve. So we got, we got this family of curves, and the family of curves here is a weight one variation uh, with a Zabelquitan differential. So uh, so we need so to describe the isomorphism, we need to let, to look a little bit deeper into the uh, into the camel curve, and first of all understand the uh, um, Understand uh, something about the, the normal section, the normal bundle of uh, of this uh, uh, this curve. So uh, first, let me say that uh, so the oops the the joint quotient gives me a tautological section of uh, p upper star u in a in a sort of Obvious way, right? So uh, you can uh, you can look at the map from M to the fiber product of M with the total space of U, which takes a point and sends it to the point and the joint quotient of the point. Um, so by by junction, we have the usual pullback of, of sections. So from a section downstairs, we get sections on pi upper star U, uh, and uh, the camel curve is. Is a section of a of a vector bundle, actually, right? So there's a there's a vector bundle on M, which is this pi upper star U, right? U as a rank L vector bundle. We pulled it back. We have uh, the camel curve as as a zero box of a section. So we have we have kind of explicit equations here. Uh, uh, again, if you fix uh, if you if you fix the base, you can think of this as you know as the system of L equations for the curve. This is not local, right? By the way, this is so M is just a point in M. I'm not using any kind of local trivialization. Uh, so uh, so there is a sort of classical techniques. For example, you can look in uh, you can look in the book of uh, Eisenberg and Harris, right? Uh, to see how you how to compute the normal bundles of uh, uh, normal bundles to sections of a vector bundle. So fiddling a little bit with uh, with the local or with the with the with the section that uh, cuts x tilde, we get that actually the p upper star of the bundle u is is precisely the normal bundle to the to the camel curve. So it's so it's a sum of the powers of the canonical pulled back uh, to the camera curve. So we have this, uh, this beautiful picture here. Uh, on one hand, we have the tangent sequence of M. M was a rank L bundle over X. We have the tangent sequence. Uh, so the horizontal sequence is the tangent sequence of the, the bundle M, right? So it's an extension of, of, uh, 
of the tangent uh, bundle to x and uh, the pullback of this uh, g, uh, g tensor k. And on the other hand, um, uh, we have the normal, vertically, we have the normal sequence uh, that uh, describes x tilde. I've skipped the subscript b, it is at a fixed point b, right? Uh, so the tangent bundle to m is to x tilde splits as an extension of uh, tx tilde and uh, uh, the pullback of uh, u. So, uh, all right. So uh, there are a couple of, uh, so to, to do the calculation, one needs to sort of, uh, of course, I'm going into somewhat uh, technical uh, level here, but uh, hopefully not too much. Uh, so to understand better the, uh, to understand better this uh, isomorphism that we're describing, we need to, uh, to do a certain local calculation and then patch it into a global statement. Uh, so there are several objects that uh, you can associate with uh, with roots, and uh, if you mishandle them, this can cause confusion. So on one hand, uh, any linear map on the Cartan by extension of scalars gives me a, a bundle homomorphism from G tensor K to K, um, and hence gives me a global section of uh, of the pullback of K to uh, to M. Uh, now, so restricting it. It gives me sections uh, on uh, x tilde, and actually the zeros of these sections uh, give me the ramification locus if I if alpha runs over over the roots. Now uh, the other point is that if uh, so uh, so so we can take a root on on t, and we can cook up from it a section of uh, of the pullback canonical. So this assignment uh, here uh, gives me. This assignment, which, uh, which typographically is represented just by making the simple vault, right? So sending the root alpha i to the vault alpha i uh, gives me uh, an injective algebra homomorphism from the symmetric algebra on T duo into to this uh, huge algebra of sections of, uh, of sums of sections of uh, powers of kx, right? Uh, so Essentially, you can take a polynomial and you can consider it as a, as a polynomial in the in the, uh, in the pullback of the different tensor powers of, of kx. So, in particular, we have this again. We can we can think of the of the global equations of the Camel curve as uh, you know, explicitly as obtained by taking the invariant polynomial and applying it to, uh, to these global sections of, uh, of various powers of kx and being equal to uh, p upper star b. So again, just for, for concreteness, for, uh, for the G2 case, um, the basis, the quadratic polynomials plus the degree six polynomials, right? And uh, so what I've written here is the, the equation for the camel curve at the given B1 and B2, given a quadratic differential and a sextic differential, uh, give me a section. So we have here um, a set that have a total space of k squared plus k to the sixth. And I've, I've kept here the picture of the, uh, um, of, uh, of R2 with the different, uh, uh, different root walls uh, removed. So, uh, all right, so very briefly, the t-valued Liouville form, right? So the roots give me a basis of t. The, let's say we look at the simple roots give me a basis of t. So we have the fundamental co which is the dual basis. Uh, and we look at, we can, the, the t-valued Liouville form is just the sum of these uh, alpha i's put in the respective slot. So ei tends to alpha i. Uh, there is a t-valued two form, which is the analog of the symplectic form in the rank one case, right? So. Uh, so the Liouville form is just the form of these both now alpha one, alpha L, and uh, the, the two form again is t-valued is when we thought of it as single vector plan. Again, I'm using all the extra choices here to, to make things explicit. So, uh, so the theorem is saying essentially the following, if you want to, to uh, write the isomorphism between the base and the, uh, the double invariant sections, uh, you do the following. You, you take the Jacobi matrix of I, I is the, uh, is the, um, I is essentially the adjoint quotient 
spelled out as a map from CL to CL. Take the uh, digital copy matrix, apply this homomorphism I into it. So you get a bunch of sections. You get matrices with coefficients in this uh, algebra of uh, tensor powers of Kx and invert it. So you invert it in the fact of that tensor algebra uh, and you apply that to the pullback of G. In general, what you are going to get is, I mean, uh, once you invert, you, you, you know, you're getting uh, and apply it to P upper star G, you're going to get metamorphic sections of this vector bundle, right? So, uh, so the statement is that, uh, uh, well, the, after you restrict to X still that this metamorphic section is actually homomorphic, right? So in rank two, right, in rank two, this, uh, uh, this means essentially, uh, it's, it's very simple, right? Uh, we just have two maps. If you want uh, to, I, I should have also put here the, the, the matrix expression, right? So this alpha one, you can think of this just being a vector with two components and you put the different entries in the two components of the, of the vector. Right. Um, uh, so uh, maybe uh, if you want to see it for G2, you can see it for G2 because we know all the ingredients uh, explicitly, both the, uh, the determinant of the Jacobi matrix and, uh, uh, and the explicit map. Uh, so uh, my extension, again, as I said, we were in principle getting a metamorphic section, so one has to use a, a kind of technical lemma uh, to show that we, uh, we're getting a homomorphic section. We need a little bit of input uh, from a paper of, uh, of Hoyt Obis and Markman, and we need a local description uh, of the exact sequences uh, that uh, the, the two exact sequences for the normal bond, right? Uh, so since I'm uh, running out of uh, time, I should be uh, wrapping it up. Uh, again, the, the numerous applications, uh, they are linked mostly to the special Keller metric. So let me just mention uh, one of them. So uh, for instance, for SL2, uh, for SL2, at least that's the, the result that is uh, known, uh, you know that uh, you can compute the uh, special Keller metric by taking this section number G of lambda uh, and uh, taking the, uh, the norm of that and uh, integrating uh, over the camera curve up to normalization factor. So this, uh, the variance uh, of this uh, formula that people have been using, uh, some of them are in related to string theoretic context, right? So some of them, uh, more Hodge theoretic. Oops. Uh, so these are um, uh, work by uh, by Ola Fredrickson, Juman uh, Naitsky, um, and uh, several other people. So uh, in principle, people. Uh, so it's it's important to know uh, what the special killer metric look, looks like. So we have a uh, now an explicit formula for uh, for that in uh, in arbitrary rank. Uh, and then there are certain special properties of the G2 case uh, that are important uh, and, uh, because there are certain extra symmetries uh, for the base in that case. And uh, uh, sort of the, having the explicit formula for the derivative of uh, lambda makes, uh, uh, makes calculations and arguments uh, easier. So, uh, I'm two minutes over time, so I want to apologize and to thank you for your attention. So I'll stop here. Okay, uh, let's let's thank uh, Peter for his talk. Uh, there is some time for questions. Are there questions, comments? Пешо, като имаш пред, като каза, че а, нормалното разслание се пресмята в Айзенбът и Хавис, имаш предвид пресмята в тази книга на, за интерсекшн теори. Да, да, да. Да. 3264. Ага, да, да, да. Uh, more yeah. like, more, more like to them ако... Uh, да, не, uh, аз, аз знам, no. въпросът е, нали, тези нормални разслания, те по принцип се пресмятат доста трудно в, 
по-общи ситуации. Тук стана дума за коразмерност. Висока. В смисъл това се иска. Тоест, това нещо, кой е измерено с L, колкото е ренга на групата. Тоест, мога да имам... Мога да има пример с колкото си искаш висока кой е размерено. Тоест, разслай. Значи, тук това, което е лесно е, че... Чакай да видя къде сме. Нали... То се разлага на пряка сума това L и значи може да вземеш, да кажем, SL, L плюс едно, нали винаги имаш случай да... Това, което е лесно, което прави нещата, окей, контролирани в случай, е, че нормалното разслоение, че кривата е сечение е complete intersection. Да, да. Тя е complete intersection. Complete intersection с предметът лесно. Защото във всички останали случаи пресмятането е невъзможно на практика. Това е complete intersection и е което идва от сечение на векторно разслоение върху ОМ. Да, на щом е complete intersection няма проблеми, да. И така, и знам парчетата, в принцип няма проблеми и знаем парчетата. Да, благодаря. Хубав доклад. Още въпроси, още коментари? Ако не, нека да благодарим още веднъж на Петър за доста сложния от моя гледна точка на неспециалист доклад. И с това официалната част на днешната сбирка приключва. Както обикновено, в този момент аз приставам да записвам и прехвърлям хостинга на в случая Петър е втория говорител, значи той е НОКО, защото нормалното развитие на събитията след един семинарен доклад е колегите да се срещнат неформално с автора на доклада и в този смисъл да естествено той да стане думакин. Затова благодаря още веднъж на всички. Основната част от докладите от отчетната ни сесия, напомням, ще бъде в петък, както всички знаете. Всички други слушатели са добре дошли и довиждане от мен. Митко, само един въпрос преди да изчезнеш. Няма да изчезнеш. Докладите ще бъдат ли слагани на страницата на секцията? Програмата ще я сложим. А самите доклади, примерно презентациите? Има такава възможност. Фактически аз ще остана тук на компютъра си и ще записвам. Няма да идва. Не става дума за PDF файловете. Да, моля. Както решим. Всеки може да си даде или да не си даде слайдовете. Минали години сме ги качвали. Който е пратил, сме го качвали. Така че си зависи от докладващия. Който иска, може да качим. Който не иска, защото ще публикува първа, може и да не качваме нищо. А пък дали ще качваме записи, не знам. Зависи вече първо дали ще е на български или на английски и ще доклад 